I don't need a second printer. I don't need a fourth printer. Uh... I can explain. So I recently became the proud owner of this slightly used bone stock Elegoo Neptune 2S, and as luck would have it, Jenny over at Slice Engineering asked if I'd like to try their latest Elegoo-based product. This is the Slice Engineering Elegoo Neptune Series Copperhead Upgrade Kit. The kit includes everything necessary for a plug-and-play solution to replace the heat brake, hot block, and nozzle on the Elegoo Neptune 2, 3, and 3 Pro type models, such as the Plus and the Max. I worked with them closely on this kit and discovered that with their standard style nozzle, the offset distance between the factory nozzle and slice parts were less than half of a millimeter in difference, which means that this setup will be a perfect drop-in replacement for Elegoo Neptune series printers running the stock inductive sensor such as the 3 Pro, Plus, and Max models without any modifications or worries. All you have to do is PID tune and set your Z offset, which should be a standard procedure when doing these types of mods anyway. Inside the box, we have the Slice Copperhead sticker, the hot end assembly with silicone boot, a tube of boron nitride paste, a nice lollipop that you can suck on while you're doing the modification, and a little baggie of swabs and an orange piece of PTFE tubing, which is special because orange. If we look at the side of the box, we can see right here that the advertised flow rate of this assembly is 35 cubic millimeters per second. So I'm kind of eager to see how this is going to perform installed on this little guy here. Being that I've done this type of modification a number of times, this should be pretty straightforward. I'll start by removing the fan shroud from the carriage plate to gain access to the hot end parts. Next, I'll remove the silicone boot from the heat block and loosen the set screw that holds the heater cartridge in place. I'll remove the screw that holds the thermistor and gently remove both the thermistor and heater from the block. I'll then remove the two screws that hold the block in place and remove the set screw that holds the factory heat brake. Depending on your model of machine, now would be a good time to remove the PTFE tube as well. You may notice the heat sink is loose because the silicone boot wouldn't come out, so I loosened the two screws that held it in place. When installing this on the Neptune 2, you have to make sure that the Slice logo faces the back of the machine for proper assembly, and then remove the screw that holds the heater cartridge and thermistor in place. Grab a swab and some boron paste and apply some liberally to the body of the heat brake before assembly. This step is optional because this is one of those personal preference things. I haven't had any issues with using it this way, so this is a hill that I'm willing to die on. Next, tighten the set screw on the heat sink to hold it in place. There are no screws that come up from the bottom on this particular block, so the set screw is really the only thing holding this assembly together. I didn't apply any boron paste to the threads because the unit came pre-assembled, but I may do so in the future. Next, apply a generous amount to the inside of the heater cartridge bore as well as the thermistor bore. One trick that I did learn is that you can insert the syringe into the heat block and just give it a little squeeze to fill up the thermistor hole with the boron paste. Apply some paste to the heater cartridge itself, then insert the heater and thermistor into their respective openings. Place the screw back in to secure everything in place. As a side note, this block is designed to accept all types of thermistors such as cartridge type, screw-in type, and bulb type. I prefer the cartridge and screw-ins, so I'll replace the stock one in the future. Take a cotton swab and remove any excess paste before putting the silicone boot onto the hot end. I haven't tightened the nozzle at temperature yet, but I'll do that before testing. Lastly, put the fan shroud back into place, tighten the screws, and install the PTFE tube to finish the installation. And that's basically it. I'm going to have to turn the machine on, heat it up, and tighten the nozzle, so I have to remove the silicone boot. But I wanted to test fit the boot to make sure that it was going to clear the screw that was behind here because I've had problems with that in the past with the stock hot end where the silicone actually gets caught on that screw. So in this case, it doesn't. 
you still have to kind of wiggle it to get it in place, but it does clear that screw. Now Slice sent this to me with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so I'm probably going to try both of them during this video. So I'm gonna start off by turning the machine on. I will heat up the hot end. I'll tighten the nozzle that's on there. I have the Slice Engineering nozzle torque wrench, so that should help with that. And from here, I have to PID tune everything to make sure that it's set properly. But I think before I do that, I'm going to install a clipper on here. That way I've got commonality between all of my other machines. Well, I may have gone just a little overboard. Okay, so I've got clipper installed and running on this machine. I did install the 0.4 millimeter nozzle only because of the profiles that I have. My slicer profiles are all dialed for a 0.4. But like I said earlier, I may try to run both the 0.4 and the 0.6 just to see how they perform. But I know that these slicer profiles work very well. So I'm going to stick with those for now. I'm going to make some test prints and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so per usual, I printed out a Voron test cube. And aside from having to dial in the resonance and pressure advance, I mean, it's a cube. Everything looks good. All the surfaces look nice. Some striations in the layers, but that's just typical of this filament. Top surface looks nice. Bridging on the inside there looks good. I mean, what more can you say? It's a heat break and a hot block swap. But yeah, it definitely looks like it's going to be a winner. So some of the benefits of this kit are that with the included Gamma Master nozzle, the coating is non-stick, which will result in less sticking and potential for the blob of death to get wrapped around your nozzle. This can also be rectified even more with some of Slice Engineering's non-stick paint, which can also be applied. With the 0.6 millimeter nozzle, you can achieve a 35 cubic millimeter per second flow rate if your machine is equipped to push that much plastic. The bimetal heat break technology allows for shorter retraction rates, sometimes as low as your orifice size. And as seen in my previous videos and Facebook postings, it's far better for materials like PETG, which had proven to be a bit of an unruly nightmare when I attempted to use it with the stock parts on my machines. It's compatible with both stock and aftermarket heater elements and thermistors. It's rated for a printing temperature of up to 450 degrees Celsius, and it includes everything needed to get up and going in a single package, including enough boron paste to last you for a good while. So there are a couple of things to consider when doing this modification. For starters, this system was designed for the Neptune 3 Pro, Plus, and Max models as a drop-in replacement. The logo on the block faces forward when you install it on those machines. Everything clears as it should, and the machine will print in beast mode once it's installed. But while it does also fit in the Neptune 2, 2S, and 2D models, the fan shroud needs a slight modification to clear because the silicone boot sits right up against the upper lip of the shroud, causing it to melt slightly if you don't trim away about one millimeter of plastic for a slight air gap. That being said, I don't think that having to add a new fan shroud to the Neptune 2 is that big of a deal because it kind of needs it anyway, but I digress. And lastly, the parts would fit into an original Neptune 3 standard, the one that was discontinued after six months. But the fan shroud is designed with such little clearance around the original heat block that a custom shroud would be needed due to the width of the copper head being larger than the standard block. If you wish to keep the original shroud, the copper head heat break would fit perfectly coupled to a plated copper block from Slamazon as seen in my previous videos from last year. So my takeaways are that this kit is a great upgrade for those looking for a bimetal option for higher printing temperatures in a single package. There's no going back and forth between forums, Facebook groups, and Slamazon reviews to find the best options. With the introductory price of $89.99, it is more priced as a professional kit rather than a Chinesium piecemeal. But you get a higher quality product that is made in the USA and helps contribute to the advancement of more 3D printer technology in the future. Keep in mind that the bimetal technology used on these copperhead parts was originally Slice Engineering's to begin with, but it was open sourced and available to the masses for other companies to copy and use as they saw fit. If you were to price all of the required items through the usual suspects, you'd find that you wouldn't be too far off in price if you factored in your time and also the fact that I do have an active coupon code through Slice Engineering, which I'll leave in the description below. The gamma coating on the nozzle is very non-stick, which I like. Even with a cool tip, I had some plastic on the nozzle and was able to easily knock it off with my fingernail. 
And finally, there's an official installation video that I encourage you to check out, which includes a thorough how-to on installing this kit on the machines it was intended for. So that'll about wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. If you enjoy my content and you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. And if you know somebody who would be interested in this type of stuff, share it with a friend because sharing is caring. Check out my affiliate links in the description down below at no additional cost to you. It just puts a little bit of catnip into my kitty and it helps with my future channel endeavors. If you're on that cesspool that is Facebook, join the group. Elegoo Neptune series. If you're on that cesspool that is Facebook, join the group. Elegoo Neptune series 3D printers, mods, tweaks, and improvements, where we offer 24 hour live chats and community support, do the occasional giveaway, and blatantly abuse the everyone tag. If you got 10 seconds to kill, check out my website at www.theferalengineer.com. It's just a whole bunch more of the same stuff, but it justifies the 12 bucks a year I spend on the URL. And once again, thank you to all of my catnip contributors, both past, present, and future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. So I recently became... <laughs> this is the Slice Engineering... Inside the box, there's the Slice Copperhead bumper sticker. What am I caught on? It's caught on the... F f and finally, there's an official installation video that I encourage you to check out, which encur... And finally, there's an official installation video that I encourage you to check out, which includes a thorough how-to... how-to...